Hello, everybody, and welcome to twitch.tv slash CLX Gaming TV. Uh, this is CLX Foundry Live. I am your host, DJ Blue PDX, here with our lead technical expert. It's Paul Steffens. And this day, well, this is Tuesday's uh, master builder, it's Hayden Hutchinson. And I'd like to say on behalf of all of us here at CLX, Happy Valentine's Day for those who celebrate, and for the rest of you, happy sad. Why sad? Well, it's a shorter way of saying Happy Singles Awareness Day. I'm not crying, but I might later. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Uh, so speaking of things that are fun in life, also, yeah, we were, we were laughing about uh, that plus more in the background. And, <laughs> yes, the DJ Snort intro. <laughs> I was trying not to laugh, but it happened nonetheless. Uh, we've got something incredible and uh the person who came up with the idea is actually in chat nicole came up with an idea that got that absolutely uh like i i had an I, it exploded it was incredible the way that we that it came out of the uh gate and it is a sakura sakura i want to make sure i say this right and i don't screw it up is it sakura i think that's the way you say it system it's one of the most beautiful pink systems i've ever seen in my life and i'm not a guy who's really all about the pink but this pink is wicked Guys, what are we shoving in this thing today? Yeah, so we've got a beast of a build here. We've got a i9-13900KF uh, for our processor. We've got an MSI Z790 Edge Wi-Fi for the board, an RTX 4090, um, 32 gigs of RAM, a terabyte Samsung NVMe drive, four terabyte storage drive. So yeah, we've got a lot of really good parts to get into. But first, I think we should show the case. So Hayden's gonna grab the case real quick. Maybe we can show off this design. This thing looks great. You've definitely seen us do it in the O11, maybe not in the Evolve yeah. X. So this looks no, great. No, we, we actually haven't done this in Evolve X. Mm -hmm. It was the O11 that we had, and I want to say that was at uh, PAX. PAX West mm -hmm. was where we had that. Yeah. And uh, that was where it actually premiered was at PAX West. And I did not know you could get this on it's both the on. Evolve and the O11. Yeah, yeah. It's, so it's often on both. Um, really like it in the Evolve X since we haven't really built too many of them. I'll lean this down and show you the top as well. Looks really good. Oh my gosh! I don't yeah. think I've actually seen that top before. That's great. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Looks great. It almost looks like it almost looks like textured, so you can touch it and feel it. Mm -hmm. So let's actually, Hayden. Sorry if you can put that back up here. Put it in front of me, and I'll get started on taking off the panels and show you guys uh, the panels a little bit more. I'll give Hayden this beast of a motherboard here, and we'll get right into it. So. And while you're doing that, I'll talk about some of our cool things that are going on right now, because guess what? As you saw the very first weekend of our show here at uh, CLX Foundry Live, we're giving away an amazing PC. It is a powder pink uh, O11 CLX Raw design, and it's absolutely incredible. If you'd like to know more, type exclamation give pink in the chat. And don't worry, we've got codes coming up today from the master of all things numbers and letters. You'd think he was good at algebra, but... I hate algebra, so I'm just not going to admit that anybody's good at it. Ivory will be dropping codes in the chat at some point, sometime, so pay attention. Stick around. There's those codes are worth 100 different entries into the giveaway, and we have multiple places that you can pick up codes this month. That includes our social media, that's YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter, at CLX Gaming, as well as over here on the shows, which are Tuesdays and Thursdays, starting at 11 a.m. Pacific, that's 2 Eastern, and over on my channel on the weekends. So... All these things mean more chances to win one of the coolest powder pink February giveaways ever, and it's a CLX Raw. No math, only code. I agree, Ivory. The chaos in the house. <coughs> also want to say hi to Carly. Hello. Uh, one cool thing to think about, remember, people, is that if you have questions or see something you don't quite understand or hear a term that maybe just doesn't make sense, please let us know. Ask us in the chat because we are all about answering your questions. And I've got a question right now. We've got an incredible motherboard. Let's take a look at this. This is an MSI MPG Z790 Edge Wi-Fi ATX board, and it's gorgeous. What are some of the cool things that you see that stand out, Hayden? My favorite thing about this board is this M.2 cover. It has a little push mechanism, and it just slides right off. But you don't have to screw it down? No. So it literally has like these little posts. I don't know if you can see, you just click click in like that. So it just snaps in just like that. Super nice. Yeah. Uh, awesome. 
Shout out to Necro who's been collecting these codes and is continuing to share the codes with everyone. It's absolutely awesome. And I think it's really cool that this community has come together so quickly and so well to uh, make sure they give everybody a great chance to win this incredible PC. So uh, jumping back over to our motherboard, this uh, Z790 is obviously, it's an upgrade from the Z690. What are some of the big differences between a 690 and 790 motherboard? Yeah, so that's going to refer to your chipset. Um, so with this 790, this is DDR5. Um, so that's one of the big differences here. And really, it's just the updated um, Intel chipset here. Gotcha. Sounds good. It also comes with some extraordinary, as uh, as Hayden mentioned, some extraordinary heat sinks, mm -hmm. which are great. You've got a nice a large one down on the south bridge and a very large one up top. But uh, I'm really impressed with that M.2 heatsink because of the fact that it, that's the first one I've ever seen that doesn't have a screw. Yeah, this is really cool. I think I might have seen it once before, but it might have just been on the edge yeah, on this board. this board. This is a board that we really like. We're thinking about carrying a lot of this. Um, so we're doing some testing on this. You'll see us building it for, for a little bit. So, yeah. And for those of you who see at that angle, that really awesome looking dragon that's engraved, looks like into the top, that is an LED light up. Uh, this board is fully RGB. It's really cool. It's got, it, it's gonna really accentuate those, that back panel in the Evolve X, which is gonna look amazing. Now, as far as its stats go, let's talk a little bit about that. You can get up to 128 gigs of, uh, of RAM on this and it's DDR5, it can go up to, and this is interesting, just one of the slots can rank overclock up to 7200, which is astoundingly incomprehensible. It's one of those things where I'm like, I didn't know that you could even overclock things to that high. Yeah, it is as wild. You, there's a lot you can do with this. Oh, and I'm sorry, it's not a 128. This is a 192. This is the first board I have seen that goes above 128 gigs max capacity for memory this is a 192 board man yeah that's a whole lot of memory that's a lot of memory ridiculous uh, mm -hmm. obviously ddr5 comes at its uh, at its base at 5000 and rolls all the way up to 6000 and they can handle all sorts of different speeds so uh it does support xmp 3.0 which i haven't the faintest idea what that means but i'm pretty sure you will yeah, XMP is what we use to overclock our memory and set our memory speeds. That's a setting that we set oh. in BIOS, so, yeah. Cool. I forget exactly what it stands for, but yeah, it refers to memory speed. Extra memory processing, who knows? There it is. Uh, but let's jump, let's jump over to the Intel Core i9-13900KF processor. Uh, tell us about this processor, Paul. Yeah, so this is a 24-core, 32-thread processor. It's got eight P cores and 16 E cores. So those P cores are performance cores, and the eight on there do have hyper-threading. So we'll get 16 threads out of those eight cores. And then the other 16 E cores, the E is for efficiency. Um, so that's going to help it run if you're just navigating your desktop, doing web browsing, all that type of stuff. It will use less power using those e-cores. So really cool technology there. Um, and Hayden's got it in his hand here. He'll, he'll go ahead and install this now. Let's see him lining up those posts. Any right. special uh, notes to ensure that if you're installing this on your own that uh, you make sure you get it in correctly? Yeah, the biggest thing is on all the processors, there'll be a tiny little gold arrow. It's right down here by my fingertip. You can see it there. Kind of hard to tell that it's an oh, arrow, yeah. but that's yeah. what it is. And then on this proc cover here, there's an arrow right there as well, kind of engraved in. It's also kind of hard oh. to see. A lot easier to see in person, but you want to make sure those arrows line up. But say you don't see those arrows, there are two uh, keyed slots here. So this processor is okay. only going to fit in one way. There's two at the top and two at the bottom. You can oh, see gross. those little notches. Yeah. For it to fit into. That's nice. Mm -hmm. I'm going to pop it down and lock the latch and the cover will pop up. That's great. That is awesome sauce. Yeah. I like it. Uh, one of the cool things about this when we're looking at the slots and covers, obviously we mentioned that there's a heat sink <clears throat> that's popped off, but also this has a pretty unique uh, IO shield design with the piping as far as its cooling setup. 
Yeah, it does. So like most high-end boards, we do have the IO Shield built, built into the board, this part right here. Um, on some standard boards, this is usually a separate piece that you'll install in the case before you do the board. I love having these installed on the motherboard. It's one less piece to lose. You don't got to worry about installing it and then lining up the ports when you're putting it in. So that is really nice. And then if we look under here, you can see those heat fins all through there. You can see all the way through them. So air will get through those and yeah. cool them. But. What I like to call the office building structure. Yeah, right. Yeah, it does look like that. Uh, one cool thing to note about this board is, and I find this interesting because it's one of the cool, one of the first things that I noticed when we were looking at it on their website is the fact that this has PCIe 5. Okay, yeah, yeah. The newest generation of, for the slots. Yeah, that's that's wild. What are some of the big advantages to PCIe 5? Yeah. It's like, it says it's Lightning Gen 5 PCIe. Yeah, so the biggest thing is that's going to refer to is just your transfers, transfer speeds. I don't have the exact numbers on hand, but it, it means it's going to transfer faster. So Luckily, in, I'm uh, looking right at the website. It says it can reach up to 128 gigs per second. <laughs> oh, yeah, that is... What? Man. That's, that's absurd, and I'm here for it. Yeah. Totally here for it. That's... <laughs> It's incredible. Uh, if we're looking over here at some of the, while we've, while we've got it laid out, we've also got that aisle, the, the aisle plate that comes with a couple different interesting pieces to it. One of those is the fact that it has an extraordinary number and type of uh, USB slot. Mm -hmm. But can you tell us what some of the differences in colors mean? Yeah, let me. And why they are important. Yeah, so let me show you here. So everybody's pretty familiar with USB ports nowadays. You have typically um, a type A, type B, and type C. Um, type A being these rectangles. Type B is like for printers, sometimes mics. You don't really see it that often. And then type C, which are these little ones here. So in those type A's, we've got a few different colors here. Blue is obviously for 3.0. That's the standard now. And then these reds are a newer version of 3.0 so these reds are going to have a better okay. transfer rate than the blues will um, and, and so that's why they're colored that way gotcha that's uh that's great and that's not the only usbs that are going to be available to the user uh mm -hmm. it's also got uh, some connections for front usbs that are on the case itself right yeah this case is going to have two usb 3.0 <coughs> in the front and a type c as well oh that's great and we'll show you guys that here in just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right now, Hayden is putting on, looks like a mounting bracket. Yeah, so we, me and Hayden have gone ahead and opened up our AIO here, our all-in-one liquid cooler. Um, and we're getting the hardware out for this motherboard so we can mount our AIO. Uh, the AIO we're using today is an Intermax Liquid 3, ARGB 360 closed loop uh, liquid cooler which are cool. They're a little bit different than the other ones that we've installed. They come with a different type of fan design. Uh, what are some of the big advantages and features of this AIO? Yeah, so the biggest difference from this AIO and other AIOs is really comes into the mounting hardware. Um, a lot of different AIO manufacturers will have different ways of mounting it to the board. Um, so Intermax has this plate that will go behind. You can see Hayden building it right now with these posts. And these posts are going to come through the back of the board and up. And then they'll get locked in with these caps you'll see him install later um, and screw down. Other than that, um, the cap and the plate will obviously look a little different on these AIOs. It's still a copper plate, still the pump's all in there, and everything else functions pretty much the same. And uh, I did miss a question up here a little bit backwards. I know that Ivory's covered it, but just so that we've got it on the broadcast, uh, when it comes to overclocking, mm -hmm. where is the point you hit basic, when you hit a point of diminishing return with modern games and programs? Very interesting question. Yeah, so with overclocking, really what's gonna limit you there is your ability to deal with the heat that it generates. Um, so having a 360 AIO, this is a great start to it. You can get a great overclock using this. Um, but really, yeah, it's not really about the games. It's just really about how can you deal with the heat effectively. Yeah, the better the cooling, the better the situation. Now you're pulling that, uh, pulling the cover off on that, that plastic, which you always want to make sure. Yep. If you're installing one of these on your own, please remove that. Always it remove smell this. smell very funny and stop things. Yep, we've had people <laughs> forget to remove this, and we catch it in testing. But, uh, you know, definitely make sure you remove it. Very, very bad. Yep.
because you don't want to have to take so everything it, off and then get it all right. back on. So I'm going to hand this over to Hayden. Like we were talking about with the mounting hardware, this plate yeah. does have, um, we have to install, depending on which CPU we're using, we have to install the right brackets on the side here. You can see my finger. So I'm going to give this to him so he can in install the Intel ones. I need a little space. Nice. Ooh, I didn't see those. I didn't see them either. Hmm. Uh, uh oh, here we go. Shout out to the Noble TV. How's it going? Good to see all the Respawn All Stars in the house. We've got Contra here as well, along with uh, uh, PlayStation Loco. Now, you are going to have to put on some thermal paste. Let's talk about that and good practices. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and throw the thermal paste on right now since we're in here. So I got them. You got the screws? Sweet. So, um, so with thermal paste, uh, all the AIOs do come with <coughs> thermal paste. It'll either be pre-applied on here, or they'll give you a small tube that it comes with. So, like, we've got one extra to use as an example. So, Fantex, uh, the Glacier ones that we've done before, they'll send you a tube like this. This looks like a really big tube, but it's not filled all the way. It's usually filled kind of about up to here, give you a couple of uses out of it. Um, but for this build, we're going to use our Arctic Silver. This is what we like to use. This is Arctic Silver 3. This is a really solid thermal paste. Um, we love using this on pretty much every build. We do have some thermal paste that's a little bit more higher end, but we save that for the flux builds. And, of course, you don't want to use everything that comes in the tube. There is extra for a reason. Mm -hmm. It's a little dabble, do you? Yep, a little dabble, get you. You can see there, I made a little pea-sized drop, and then I just wiped the tip off of this on the processor to make sure this was clean. Um, so yeah, Hayden's got the screws for those plate or those brackets, so he's gonna mount those, and then we'll mount the CPU, and then we'll probably get into so, the M.2 next. But awesome. Uh, so Hayden, let's talk about what some of the advantages are for putting the AIO on this early in the build. So, um, putting the AIO on first helps to, when you're putting your motherboard in, you won't have to struggle around trying to fit it into the, like, the top of the case. So if I were to put my fans on now, I don't have to worry about putting on fans upside down, basically. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Oh, I just noticed... I don't think I've actually noticed you put the side, like actually screw down and mount the side brackets onto the AIO before. Yeah, so the inner max is really the only one that we carry that we have to do this with. Um, some of the other ones, the Fantex Glacier one that you've seen us do and our CLX Quench that we do, the clip will actually just come on and clip in. Like it's really easy. There's no screws required. Um, so this is a little bit different. This is fine though. Just a couple extra nice. steps. Bear says, wait, so I'm not supposed to use the triple amount of thermal paste they did? Yes. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. Uh, my very first, first build was with an Athlon XP processor back in, I want to say, 2002. And I did exactly that. I put the whole tube on it, and it just went... <laughs> on, and that was just an air cooler, and it just kind of went everywhere, and I thought, well, that doesn't look right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm... In there, I'm in there with, because uh, I don't want to take it back off, so I'm just in there with a Q-tip trying to pull all this stuff off. It was a mess. I'm, I'm so lucky that thing even turned on without catching on fire. <laughs> yeah, thermal paste is a pain to clean up, too. It's like you get it on your fingers here at the beginning of the day, and it's on there for a few days, so. Yeah. It's like tree pitch. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just like, no, like, this is awful. Yeah. Everything I'm touching sticks to it. Mm -hmm. Heaven forbid. <laughs> Heaven forbid you're trying to do schoolwork and turn pages in a book, and all of a sudden the page just comes off on your hand. Yeah. yeah. I'm not saying I've been there. I'm just saying I've seen it happen, <laughs> and it might have been me. Now I do notice that there's these. That looks the the screws look like they're springy. Yeah. So they're going onto that board. Yeah. So there are springs on those screws, and that provides really good tension because um, this is really going to be. Um, you want that plate mounted to the processor very like in a very tight way. I don't want to I don't want to say that and make people over tighten it. You definitely don't want to do that. But you definitely want it to be pretty tight that way you get a good uh, heat transfer between the processor and the plate on the AIO itself. Gotcha. Excellent. And if, and I take it that that also will allow for a little bit of expansion and contraction for with the heat as it starts to, you know, my, as as it builds. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And uh, yes, Doc Chaos agreed. That was the first thing that came to my mind was Clark Griswold and, Chris, and uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. A lot of pitch. A lot of pitch. 
<laughs> All right, now we've got that. Uh, now I'm assuming that's for the RG. No, that's actually for the motor. I always get that confused. There's one for the RGB if it has it mm -hmm. on the cap. The other one is for the actual pump. Yeah, so this, that white cable you see Hayden routing right now, that is the power for the pump. Um, and okay. when you're plugging this in, you want to plug it into the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Nowadays, motherboards mm -hmm. will say CPU fan or slash pump or AIO, something okay. like that. Um, and the reason you want to do that is it would work on a different fan header, but the CPU and the pump headers are going to actually regulate the voltage to that based on heat. So it'll spin your pump up faster if it needs to. Um, if you use just a regular fan header, it would just stay at the same speed. Uh, Abdallah uh, Afafi, I hope I, I hope I said that right. I apologize if I just ruined your name. Uh, asks, does the AIO come with pre-applied thermal paste? And some of them do. Uh, this mm -hmm. one just doesn't uh, happen to. They, they have it all separate. Yeah, this one comes with its own really small tube. We probably just threw it to the side here, but yeah. Yeah. Now, are we using, we are using the Intermax fans on this or no? Uh, no, so we have seven white okay. uh, Game DS M2 fans here. Oh yeah, nice. Hayden grabbed it for me. This is the thermal paste that comes with the Intermax cooler. This cute little syringe here. <laughs> so. It's so tiny. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> please, please don't eat your thermal paste either. Yeah, it doesn't taste good, trust me. <laughs> cannot, there's, it cannot be healthy. Yeah. So. All right, so we're going to get this on here. Now, this is going to be attached to... Where is this going to be attached to in the PC? So we're top gonna, of the case. Yeah, we're going to mount this to the top of the case here. So with this case, we're going to... For this build, we're going to use seven fans. So we'll have three fans in the front, one in the rear, and then three fans on the top that are mounted to this radiator here. All right. Uh, Bear says, tastes like beef jerky. Bear, when was the last time you had beef jerky? <laughs> and if it was a long time ago, it might have been expired if that's what it tastes like. Yeah. I'm just saying, Some dry you might want to check jerky the, right there. You might want to check the expiration date, the use by. Please use by this date or don't. Uh, Silk Chaos is in the house. Hello, welcome. And if anybody wanted to know something about thermal pastes with codes, that's a new code. It's a code. Get it, get it, get it good. Your code is pink dash H. J Y M. That's a ham, jam, yam, mash. That's the worst meal I could have possibly said, and yet still, it feels reasonable. Uh, <clears throat> there we go. Pink H J Y M. Let's go with it. That is your first code today. While Hayden's getting everything screwed down, we have uh, stayed with the whole you're not allowed power tools on the show because. Otherwise, uh, there, I could they're not too loud, talk guys. fast enough. I'm about they're to bust out the power they're, tools they're so I can loud. catch up with Hayden. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so this case comes with three 140 millimeter fans in here from Fantech. So we're going to take these out. That way we have room to mount yeah. the Game Deus ones. I was going to ask, those things look gigantic. Yeah, these are bigger. It's pretty easy to tell from a glance that oh, the 140s. size from 140s to 120s. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that's uh, now. Is there uh, is there much of a performance difference or cooling difference between having 140s versus one the 120s? <coughs> and I see this looking at it because it looks like it has more blades, but it looks they, the blades look thinner. And I don't know if they would move less move less air or more. Yeah. So these the 140s will move uh, more air through. Um, but as far as like seeing your internal temperatures, you're really not going to see a difference from using 140s to 120s. They, okay. they do make some AIOs that fit 140 mil fans. So instead of it being like a 120, 240, 360, it's a 140, 280, and whatever three times 140 is. Yeah. So, but, Interesting. but I haven't seen one of those in a while. Mine is. That's what yeah. yours is. Hayden's got that. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Contra's very much on the uh, Thanksgiving. It's ham instead of turkey. Ham, jam, yams, and mashed potatoes. I'll be honest. Everything you just said makes me very hungry. <laughs> uh, it's very true. <laughs> all right. We're getting those all put in. 
And of course, the, how are those fans going to be cooling that radiator? Uh, is it uh, in, out, across? Yes, yeah, so they're going to be pushing air through the radiator. So the fans will be under the radiator. It'll be fans, radiator, and then top of case. So we'll be pushing air Got through it. the radiator and out the top, which is the optimal way to use an AIO. Um, if we had them on the other side, they would be pulling, um, where they're actually pulling air through. Um, and that works too, it, it is functional, but you get better performance if you're pushing through. And then if you wanna be the best with it, you can do a push pull and have fans on both sides of the radiator. Um, but you gotta check with your case and motherboard, like these heat sinks we were talking about on the motherboard are kinda tall. So adding another fan <coughs> to the top of this will obviously make this whole piece thicker and it might bump into those heat shields. So you definitely wanna make sure you have the space before you commit to something like that. And I want to say that in one of our, I think it was our Horus build, or maybe it was a set. It was a, no, it was a Scarab. We did a Scarab build, mm -hmm. and we had a push pull on a 120. Yeah, that's right. We did. Yeah, we were able to make that fit. Yeah, so if you guys pop back to the one of those over to that show over on our YouTube channel, you can catch up with all of our last shows and latest shows. Uh, but if you want to see how a push pull works, just check it out. We built one uh, for a customer there, and it was really really cool actually. Uh, but that's what I have for cooling in my gaming PC is a push pull 120 um, And I love to feel the hoses because it it's hot in my hand um, <laughs> so Worse than I meant it. So all right, what's next gentlemen? All right So we've got the memory and the m.2 to install next looks like Hayden's primed and ready for the memory So we'll go ahead and put that in Well, let's jump into that that is two 16 gig sticks of gel ddr5 5200 for a total of 3200 3200 32 gigs good lord 32 gigs of ddr5 ram that should uh that should be sufficient also what would you what did you just flip over there bud this right here is instead of screwing down your m.2 this little swivel thing holds it down that's got to be handy that is nice that's really nice very quick access less less likely to slip with a screwdriver and screw things up i'm really impressed with the fact that this is just a click in place thermal pad yeah it's really nice these these are really cool we <clears throat> really don't you. see them that often like this is on par with how cool the button is for the pcie lounge. yeah i still yeah. think the button's yeah. cooler i think the button but should this be is on cool. every board so. yeah the button should be on every yeah. board if they could do this then now you don't got to worry about those tiny m.2 yeah screws. if you could do the button yeah. and this that'd be, that'd be the best board yep all right uh, so yeah i agree bear i hate the small screws for m.2s so what's really bad is when you drop one and then you have to turn the motherboard around because it gets caught in one of the heat shields and you're like shaking the board trying not to break anything but waiting for it to fall out and hoping to god you can find it mm -hmm. or maybe that's just me <laughs> we just forget about that screw and grab a second one yeah, yeah. <laughs> no just kidding go do that yep as you can see uh right there you can see the top front of that board where the control mechanism is for the front of the case mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we swapped places real quick. I've got the motherboard and Hayden's got the case. So Hayden's gonna go ahead and gotcha, install gotcha. these case fans now. I've got four to install since we have three on the radiator already. So uh, while we're doing that, let's, since it is taken apart, let's show what kind of filtration options this device has. Yeah, it comes so two filters. let me grab this. I've got the panels over here. I'll just grab one of them real quick to show you guys. So this is the easiest one to just throw back in for a good demonstration. So we've got magnetic dust filters here. There'll be some on the top and one on the front because those are our main intakes. And then there's one down here at the bottom. You can see it right there where my hands are for our power supply. So our power supply is gonna intake through there. So this filter that slides out, we'll get that. <coughs> but then for the front here, there's actual magnets on the other side of this. You can see them in the corners. And this just fits into those slots there and snaps in, so really great design. I really like this. And then our front panel obviously awesome. goes over that. Nice, perfect. Uh, Filtration is always really important because it is how air gets in and out of your PC. Uh, as you can see, this build does have two sets of feet on the bottom. So you've got a little bit of height there. You've got some room for it to breathe and uh, as well as to cool off. You wanna make sure that if you are, sitting your device on carpet that you're taking care to make sure that it is not subject to static electric discharge. Paul, what is that and what can it do? 
Yeah, so a static electric discharge can be anything like if you run across carpet floor and you touch somebody and you feel that shock, that's static that can build up. Um, so you don't want that getting inside your case. It's okay, your, your case should be a grounding point itself. So if you touch your, the body of your case, that, that's fine. Um, but a good way to prevent that, like I have this exact case as my personal rig in my basement at home, which is on carpet. And I just cut out a rectangle of cardboard and put it under there. Um, if you've got you know, a piece of wood that fits, you can do that, any tiles left over, anything that's gonna compress the carpet and still leave this gap um, between the floor and the bottom of your PC to get fresh air in. Now the main intake on this case is in the front, so that's obviously great for that, but your power supply is still gonna be pulling air in through the bottom. Cool. Getting those space out and up there. Now these of course are, there are seven of these. They are the white uh, Game DS Aeolus RGB, uh, M2 RGB fans. Mm -hmm. These not only have a ring that lights up in them, but they also have the blades that light up, which is extremely unique. Yeah, these are great looking Ooh. fans. Once we get this thing on, you'll yeah. see these are beautiful. Now, is the air flowing in or out of that front? So here the air is flowing out. And the way you can tell is you see these fan grills here, these pieces, that, that's the side the air is gonna come out of. So let me grab this fan from Hayden real quick. So the fan grills I'm talking about are right here. And then if we look at the other side, all you see is the blaze, there's no grill. So when there's no grill, this is your intake, and the grill gotcha. is your okay. exhaust. They used to print arrows on the side of fans, like right here, that would show yep. the rotation of the fan and yeah. the direction, um, but we don't really see that anymore. Uh, just to jump back over to what we installed a few minutes ago, that uh, M.2 drive is a one terabyte Samsung 980 M.2 NVMe SSD. Super fast drive, super fast. Uh, we got uh, Gilbert PB, thank you so much for the sub. We got a sub, hi. Oh yeah. There you go, nicely done, appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, I know Bear subbed before the show started, did not quite get, uh, was a little early. Was like, hey, I'm super early. <laughs> yes, yes you were, but that's okay. We still appreciate the sub. Uh, your subs help us uh, continue to do what we do. There we go. I'm gonna rotate this just a little bit more, Hayden. So you can see Hayden was um, lining up this fan. So these cutouts right here, we can mount our, we have a lot of play in where we want to mount our fan. Um, so oh. we're going lower here because we're, he's gonna have the radiator up top. So this will give us a better gap up there, a little bit easier to install. Uh, another thing to point out on the very back, you see those little black, what looks like black stripes? Those are Velcro ties to help with cable management. They are super useful. And one of the cool features, one of, it's one of my favorite features of this case, aside from the doors. Yeah, they're really great. They make the tying up really easy. Um, it's nice on this white case. When I think we're doing a black evolve on one of the other shows. It's kind of hard to see those straps when they're black on black, Sweet. but they stand out really well on this white case. That is awesome. All right. All right. So we're going to mount the board next. Uh, what are some best tips or, or best practices when you're installing a board that has a built-in I.O. shield? Yeah, so with the built-in I.O. shields, very easy to line up on this. The biggest slice my thumb right down the side of it. I've done that. Yeah, oh. that felt real bad. Yeah, that's bad. But if you need to like open Always up a fun. box, they're great to use. You don't have a knife nearby. You just grab an IO shield and slice <laughs> it open. Yeah. I have definitely, I've done that multiple times. Yo, man, you got a razor blade? No, but I have an old IO shield. Mm -hmm. That'll do, baby. That'll do. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> so, if anybody in chat's got questions, please let us know. I is a little bit of a hiccup which means you probably can't hear a word I'm saying. Uh, we're, we are working on it. Don't worry. Audio. Okay, so audio is fine. Yeah, so we, you can hear us. You just might not be able to see us in tandem. Uh, wow, that's interesting. <clears throat> yeah, it should. 
You know, it's usually just clicks back up. It's kind of unfortunate. Uh, so that being said, so we're getting all those final pieces in there and getting those screws mounted down on the posts. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the extra hard drive tray out of here and I'll probably go ahead and install that into the tray for Hayden. We can go over that a little bit. Absolutely. So the drive that we're going to be installing, this is going to be the secondary drive. It's a good drive to use for, say, software, games, uh, at, you know, anything that you need to store. It is a four terabyte, three and a half inch Seagate Barracuda hard disk drive. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a mechanical drive, correct? Correct. Yep. What are the different types of drives and, and how are they different? So you've got two types of drives and then they're broken down a little bit. I'll explain. So you've got your... HDDs are your hard disk drives, also known as mechanical drives. And then you've got your SSDs, which is your solid state drive. Um, now the mechanical drive is called mechanical because there's actual spinning platters in here that kind of look like a, like a small CD. There's a bunch of them stacked on top of each other and then an arm that <clears throat> goes back and forth to read the data. So it's mechanical, there are moving parts. Um, and then the other type is solid state. Uh, drive, which means there's no moving parts. Now those get broken down into quite a few different categories. You've got two and a half inch. Um, M.2 is what we really see now. We really don't see that many two and a half inch anymore. This is a three and a half inch drive, just refers to the size, two and a half inch, obviously smaller. Um, but really they're getting that same solid state storage on the M.2s, which is what you're seeing us install here. Um, the M.2 has just become a lot more common. Um, and it's just a little bit better, easier to, easier to install than a two and a half inch. Um, but that gotcha. can be kind of, um, it can be a little confusing once you get into that um, SSD category because there's different types. <coughs> gotcha. All right. We, uh, and for those of you who can hear, we do know that there is an issue with video. Uh, we're working on that presently as we speak, but the upside is you can hear me. And if all else fails, I can just whistle what's happening and hopefully you can interpret it. <laughs> Unless you can't hear me and then that entire joke just got lost. Oh no. <clears throat> so, um. All right. <clears throat> Was Cotton Candy an inspiration for this month's PC? Uh, the blue on the side pink gives me those vibes. It's actually, um, what are they called? Uh, cherry blossoms. It's a pink cherry blossom uh, side, which is absolutely brilliant. It's gorgeous. Uh, I will say, <clears throat> I need to step away for a hot second because my, I just got a bloody nose, and um, I'm I tired of drinking. Earlier. So, it's okay. Well, just, just hang on. Time. I'm gonna be right back. Uh, Paul, take us away with what's coming up next. Yeah. All right, guys, so like we mentioned, um, Hayden's installing the motherboard right here. Was there a little issue with a standoff in yes. there? Yes, What do we got going on? A stuck standoff, broken screw? Yep, broken screw off the post. Oh, okay. For the GPU. All right, you got another one? I do not. Okay. They need to take this out. So, I can so we're gonna take the board out to get this broken screw off. We've seen this in this um, Leon Lee mounting bracket. We really love this mounting bracket for GPUs. Um, unfortunately, the screws do seem to break off in them quite a bit. So um, I can actually pull this board out, Hayden, if you wanna go grab another one. Okay. I will be right back. And we'll show you once we get this board out kind of what we're talking about here. Hopefully you guys can hear me and see what's going on. We are just working through this little technical difficulty we got here. But this will be a good example of what to do if this happens to you. And so this, um, the companies that are making these brackets are really coming out with some good designs, but still getting some kinks figured out, I think. But it's just good to have a solid bracket that will mount to both sides of the GPU. So we'll obviously show you all that once we get the GPU installed. Hey, welcome back. Oh yeah. <clears throat> Hi. 
right. So, yeah, I'll be fine. It's just weather, severe weather changes cause uh, these things to happen for me. That's what happens when you get old. <clears throat> All right. <laughs> okay, so now it looks like we are... Are we remounting something? Yes. Or just looking at so we were okay. installing our bracket for our video card, and we had a screw break off in oh. the standoff for that. Now, I was telling chat, this is something we have seen with these brackets before. Um, it's kind of unfortunate. I think they're just kind of figuring out all the uh, all the little kinks and stuff because, you know, usually you don't see a broken screw, especially in computer building because nothing gets tightened down that much. Yeah. <clears throat> so, there I'll we go. show you here. You can see right here, you can see that little silver piece in there, whereas all the other standoffs are just black. Um, so that silver piece is what's left of our screw. So if this ever happens and the case that you buy comes with a bunch of extra hardware, and so there'll mm -hmm. be extra standoffs in there. So we'll just throw this one oh, in the cool. trash and grab a standoffs out of there. Obviously we have a bunch of extra here in the yeah. shop, but um, yeah, you've got an extra standoff over there, yeah. Hayden. Cool, and Hayden's back with some new hardware. It, that yeah, really yeah. is, might have been, I mean, it's not like, I don't want to make the problem seem bigger than what it is, but that's probably like the sixth or seventh time I've seen a screw break off in there. Yeah. And I mean, yeah. Hayden's yeah. just using a regular screwdriver, so. Um, Jeez. Yeah. Hayden over here, also known as Torque Master Flex. Uh, that, that's his nickname in the shop. That's interesting. Hmm. Right, so I'm just hearing from production. We, we know we are aware that there is some sort of a connectivity issue with Twitch. <clears throat> We're working to discover and uh, address it. All right. So everybody just give us a hot second. We're working on it. Okay. The stream said network error. Please try. I wow. Okay. Well, we're working on it. I'll just put it in there. We're working. Okay, well, do we want to pause or? All right, we are back after a momentary interlude brought to you by Things Out of Our Control. <laughs> well, let's get back into the build. We've got, uh, we've got some cool stuff happening right now. What's going on? Because I see you pulling out lots of cables and cords. Uh, what are those for? Okay, so these are for the power supply. Um, just to, since the, whatever issue happened, just to bring everybody back up to speed. We had a broken screw and a standoff over here by the motherboard. So we took the motherboard out, removed that standoff, installed a new standoff, and got our bracket for our video card in. So you guys will cool. see that in a sec. Um, I've got the hard drive installed in the tray here. This will go nice. in the case. We'll show that in a little bit. Um, but right now we are prepping our cables to go with our modular power supply here. I'm gonna plug in my CPU and that, cables first. All right, that is a thousand watt Fantax amp series 80 plus gold power supply. Now this is a really wicked power supply for a couple of reasons. One, it's white and matches the case. It looks good in there. Um, but I do have a question about power supplies and those connections. Mm -hmm. So, some power supplies can come with thing, uh, something called a cable sleeve. What right. determines whether or not cable sleeves are available or an option with a specific power supply? Are the cables universal or are they uniquely independent to the brand? All right, so the cables are not universal. They are independent to the brand. Now, I'll just use Got cable it. mod as an example because that's primarily what we use here. There are some other different sleeved cables, but just as an example, use cable mod. So if you're wanting to get sleeved cables for your power supply, look at cable mod, look at what power supply you have, and you'll definitely want, they, they'll have a way to figure out, you can put in what power supply you have, and they'll show you the kits that are available for it. 
Um, typically we use uh, an EVGA modular power supply with those cable kits. So that's what you see most of the time here. Our EVGA was really our higher end modular power supply that we're using, but with Fantex having these now, we're starting to see these a lot more. Like you mentioned, I do like this because they're white. They match the theme of the build. Mm -hmm. And the cables are actually white themselves, which is nice. Yeah. And I, I don't know if there's sleeve cable kits for this power supply or not yet. This is a relatively new power supply, so usually it does take some time for, you know, R&D on cable mod side and whatnot. Yeah. Which is totally cool. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, Hayden's uh, popping cables up and through different holes and spaces in the back. What are... So are these going to be the fan cables right here, or...? Yes. Here's the fan cables. Gotcha. The fan cables coming through. There we go. Now, getting this first screw in on the radiator is the challenge. Once you get this first screw in, your life gets a lot easier. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll hold it, Hayden. That way you can let go. Yeah. So once Thank you get the Paul. first one in, you got it, man. And then once you get the second screw in, it'll pretty much hold itself. And you can have your hands back. There you go. Nice. All right, we'll get that up there on top. Mm -hmm. First group. Now, is this a magnetic screwdriver you're using, or? Yes. It is awesome. Nice. Those are always handy to utilize. Well, actually, you can, you know, make it non-magnetized, but. Yeah, you can magnetize them just by running a magnet along it a few times, and yeah. there you go. Science. Like a big radar array magnet, or are we talking like a fridge magnet? So like we use pretty heavy magnets. Like I've dismantled a couple hard drives because there's really good magnets in the hard drives. If the hard drives are dead, there's really strong magnets in there. So that's usually what we use. That's what we have lying around. We we'll just take the magnets out of it, and it's a really strong magnet. Yeah. Um, you can do it with a regular magnet, but it's going to take longer. So the stronger magnet you have, the less strokes you have to do down the screwdriver or whatever you're trying to magnetize. Um, nice. So something else to point out, why we were getting this power supply out, um, Hayden wanted to install his CPU cables for the power supply before he got the radiator in. Really smart move okay. by Hayden, because now if we look in there, it's, it's a lot harder to install these cables with the radiator in. So another big perk to a fully modular power supply, you can plug in your cables to the board without having them plugged into the power supply. You know, that's actually a really neat trick. Hayden, what are some other, I would say, uh, little tips or tricks that you use when you are establishing the cable line out for your PCs that you build? Well, first I gotta just, I gotta see if it's gonna be a modular or a, you know, a non-modular. Cause like this, you know, me plugging in that CPU cable first, if it wasn't a modular one, I would have to install it in the back <clears> of the case and have the radiator hanging out, plug in my cables and then put my radiator in and screw it in. It just makes it a uh, lot harder. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For example. Kind of makes you. What's that? I'm just saying, for example. Oh. Yep. And just to clarify, since I don't know if we've already covered it, we may have, but it was uh, when it was glitchy. Uh, what are the diff the three different <coughs> types of power supplies, Paul? Yeah. So this is a fully modular power supply, no cables soldered in, the whole brick right here. Um, and then we have a semi-modular, which would be some of it like this with our main power connectors, 24 pin, CPU, and usually a video card cable that are soldered in that you can't unplug. So that would be semi-modular. And then you have non-modular where all the cables for the power supply are soldered in, you don't unplug anything. Um, so really like what I always tell people is the power supply is kind of a spot where you can save some money on your budget. Don't skimp out on the power supply, but just, you know, get at least an 80 plus bronze. Um, but if you need to save some money, go with a non-modular because they're, they're going to be cheaper than a fully modular. Um, Absolutely. And per performance wise, if you've got a 750 watt modular and a 750 watt non-modular, that are all, you know, same rating. They're going to perform the same. This is more of a convenience and and, and mm -hmm. uh, cleanliness kind of a thing. Aesthetics, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I know that my, so my gaming PC has a non-modular mm -hmm. power supply in it. Uh, and it's got a similar lower, like the lower drop zone there below that base where you, you know, you've got your hard drives, you've got your power supply in there. But when I opened up my case to fix, to, to take out the hard drive that failed, I was shocked to see how many cables were stuffed Mm -hmm. in there for a non for, for a non-modular 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Depending on the build, you know, the higher, typically the higher wattage you go, the more cables there's going to be. Um, yeah. Just because you have more power that you can deliver. Um, so if you got like a high wattage power supply that's non-modular, there's going to be a lot of extra cables. Um, typically yeah. though, once you get into that, I don't know, eight, 850, thousand watt power range pretty much everything is modular honestly i don't know if i've yeah. seen a non-modular thousand watt power supply before that'd be kind of funny yeah it would it would it, I mean, you know why it's probably because all the cables that could be in it would just be so many cables yeah. coming out of it yeah right that would just be there's four vgas for you that you can't yeah choose what tuck, you want to do with tuck, them. Uh, tuck these in somewhere yeah neatly there we go yeah so and it, not having those cables in the way is important for not just, you know, cleanliness and ease of use, but also it can directly affect airflow. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's definitely one of the practical reasons to go with a fully modular. Less cables in your system means less things obstructing airflow um, and just a cleaner tie up. Easier to find stuff too. Like if you're like, oh, maybe I just need to reseat my 24 pin or my CPU, a lot less cables to dig through to find those. Yeah. Absolutely agree. Mm -hmm. All right, now that we're getting that all in, what's in the box? What's in the what's box? What's in the box? So, so we've got our fan controller here. This is where all of our there fans are going to plug into this. These fan controllers for the Game DS fans can take up to eight fans and two <coughs> light strips. Um, now, you've seen us do builds uh, with 10 fans that are Game DS. You can daisy chain two controllers together to give you up to 16 oh, cool. fans. Um, we don't know what the cap is on that. Maybe someday on the show we'll do a nice experiment, how see how many we can chain together. That would be pretty fun. Um, but yeah, this, this is really good, and this will all be controlled via a remote, which I really like. So we could we could do that on, we could do that on Halloween our Halloween show and have and we'll just Frankenstein a computer together. What can we fit in this build? <laughs> that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be hilarious. Mm -hmm. All right, we've done a push pull on everything. And it's like smoking. <laughs> yeah. You would get one of those big elite cases. No, we're gonna just build it in a pumpkin. Oh, there, we yeah. totally oh my gosh! In a pumpkin. We could do it. We could do it. I that, like it. Your PC will only last for about three weeks before it starts to mold. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> listen, I had an idea for a pumpkin paint job. There you go. You could do it. You could do it in a big in a big ceramic like uh, a big ceramic because that whole well no those those don't bleed heat they hold heat. That would mm, actually be a bad better. Idea. Okay. Okay. Highly ventilated or something. <clears throat> okay, so now that we're getting that all in there, that of course controls the lighting, uh, which is why every time that Paul tries to adjust the lights after the build, everything in the office changes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've stayed off the remote for the last couple ones because, yeah, accent lighting. Don't want to make it go crazy. All right, now we're getting those zip ties on there. So do you util use the Velcros to organize it first and then zip tie groups, or do you zip tie everything and then Velcro it down? Both. I uh, okay. zip tie, zip tie, Velcro, zip tie, zip tie, Velcro, and I kind of go in like a pattern. Okay, got it. It keeps uh, everything do you nice. Want, do you usually keep all the lighting, light cabling and power cabling for the, for the fans separate from the rest of the power and items or do you kind of just lump them all in and make it one well um all my cables on the left side stay in the left side and then you know the right side goes in and they all bundle in and tuck underneath together mm -hmm. there we go I think what I love is the fact that this ends up looking like a spiky porcupine. And then he just clips everything off. And it's mm. like, just as you mentioned, I think last, last week, it's a nice rush of adrenaline to just do it all at once. Yep. <laughs> it's a nice little hit there. It's Hayden's yeah. addiction. A little, little dopamine. Just yeah. a little fun. Yep. All right, we're getting those all down. Yeah, this case, we, we've obviously talked about the tie-up on them before, but this case is great. Yeah. You bring it all over here on this side, then strap it all down with the Velcro, and then when the doors go on, you don't see any cables, which is really cool. Which is brilliant because those doors are clear. Mm -hmm. they're, they're awesome. Yeah. I love them. 
Okay. So while we're doing this, I think it's a good time for us to pop over and show people how they can pick up this or many other different <coughs> types and kinds of PCs, if you're ready, Jason. At Celex Gaming, we like to make sure that it's as easy as possible for you to get your hands on the PC that works best for you. And it's going to be branded in just the right way that, well, it meets your needs. Head on over to CLXGaming.com where you can assemble everything and anything to your desire. Whether it's a raw, a full size, a mid size, we've got them all there. You can choose your processor, your graphics card, and your motherboard along with your RAM and any other peripherals you might like. And don't worry, you don't have to be an expert like Paul or Hayden. You can actually be a complete novice at this, and we've made sure that we'll catch any potential configuration errors that might come through. If you've picked two items that are not compatible, you'll notice the green button turns into Resolve con Solve Conflict, where we show you exactly how to fix the problem and with what materials, which items don't necessarily fit with others. And we'll make sure that you end up with a build that works generously and is going to uh, get your game up to the next level. But don't worry, if you're not looking to actually pick up uh, or build your own, we've got plenty of ready-to-ship pre-built models available right now to head right out the door to your home. You can pick from any different size or kind. You want to make sure that it's got the right parts and the right pieces. And, of course, if you have any questions, you just hit up our chat right there on the site, and we'll be able to help guide you through the process of deciding what's going to be the next step in your gaming device. So for all of your gaming needs, check it out at CLXGaming.com. Blam. Did it. And in the meantime, Hayden's been over here working on all of the cabling. Now, here's where I always get weirded out, is getting the power cables to the right spots on the motherboard because there's so many pins and so many places to plug stuff in. Yeah, when you're plugging in like the the front panel connection, so there's an RGB one there, there's a one for the power button, uh, HD audio for your headset and mic port. Yeah, they, there's pretty small pins to get them um, to get them lined up. Now we've obviously got them just memorized here from doing it so much, but um, your motherboard pamphlet will show you um, where those where those connections are. Awesome. That is always important. Read the instructions, people. Mm -hmm. It's not difficult. It's just common sense. And yeah. keep the booklet. Yeah, definitely keep the booklet. And really, Hayden's got most of his tie-up done right now. You can see this thick bundle of cables right here. Um, this is really everything. Once he clips all these zip ties, it'll look really clean, and then these will get tucked back behind the Velcro. So this is kind of a cool part in the process where it kind of all looks a mess, and then it just all yeah. comes together really quick. Well, I, I kind of, honestly, I kind of dig the chaos. Mm -hmm. I dig the chaos involved. It's cool. Yeah. It makes it's, it look overwhelming. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, the tie-up is the most overwhelming part of the PC, really. Um, if you don't care about tie-up, like the first PC I built was a mess. I just plugged <laughs> everything in and turned it on. Me too. I just not look slapped good. my panels on and yeah. had to yep. make That sure was before it's... you had, like, windowed panels, though, yeah. so. Oh God, yeah, no. So we just like you know, whatever. The cases were cases were super basic. Mm -hmm. Were not very effective. <laughs> right. Uh, so something else um, I'm going to install for Hayden while he's doing that power supply. So he mentioned this hard drive here. Um, perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and install this. We might go over to the two shot, Jason. <clears throat> so I'm going to rotate this a little bit, Hayden. Sorry if this. Very good. So you can see all these little notches in here. So we've got yeah. quite a few trays options to install these, and they can also stack on top of each other. So this is just gonna slide in. It's gonna be kind of hard to see on the shot because they gotta get it deep in there, but just listen for the click. And once this is lined up, you'll hear a snap here, right there. And it's all good, it's right in there, so. And uh, it has potential for up to 10 drives in that space down there, which is wild. Yeah, this they case can fit is, a lot in there. This case is pretty wild with how much. So you can stack a few on top of each other, and then there's multiple bays there. And then in the case, actually, if you're looking on the inside on the right, so um, right here, these doors that you see, these come off <coughs> and you can actually install trays that will stack as well all up in there, so. Oh, no you kidding. You can put a ton of drives in this thing. Wow, wow. We've only done it a That's, couple uh... times. We've had a couple customer orders where they, you know, order like six extra hard drives. 
with this case so. yeah. it's too bad they don't make rgb hard drives you know every time they, right. the data is accessing it's doing something weird on the on the top of it that would be cool but yeah but i can see why they wouldn't or wouldn't why it wouldn't them. be feasible yeah 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 it seems like the tradition's kind of to tuck your hard drives away where you can't see them hide them yeah. all yeah, yeah. I, uh, ironically, I have hard drives upstairs that are wrapped in foam and saran wrap that are from ages ago when I had, when I, my music production PC fried. Oh. And, uh, it would be, and I, I, looking back now, I'm pretty sure it was just the power supply. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But I couldn't, I didn't know how to fix anything back then. I was gonna have to buy a brand new PC. So I just pulled the hard drives out and kept them. And one of these days, I mean, I'm pretty sure that was Windows XP okay. at that point, Service mm -hmm. Pack 2, Service Pack 3. Um, and yeah, no, I've still got them. I wonder if I could ever pull data off of there. I bet you could. Yeah, I'm sure you could. So one of those little universal things you see on, you know, on Instagram stories or Facebook. Mm-hmm. I will have to check that out. And even with that, like before you even spend any money, you might just try plugging it into your computer with a SATA data and SATA power. With it being a different operating system, I'm not exactly sure. But, How that works, yeah. But it might. It's worth a try. And hopefully Windows, and if there's if there are any viruses on it, because let's be fair, <laughs> if it was from back then, it's pretty simple comparatively. Uh, I'm assuming the Windows Defender would probably catch it. Yeah, I, I, I think so. I hope so. Yeah. All them LimeWire viruses. <laughs> okay, I'm not gonna say that I, or admit that I was ever on LimeWire or Napster, but <laughs> there's a very real chance that something from LimeWire or Napster is on that drive. Yeah. LimeWire <laughs> is such a gamble. <laughs> oh yeah. Like I downloaded this song. Oh, it's something totally different. This is yep. an inappropriate video. <laughs> so I did, when I was, the other one thing I did when it came from to that PC was uh, Windows Mobile mods. Oh. Yep. Okay. And then when Android came out, we started playing with, uh, with the concept of jailbreaking and, you know, having your installing full versions because it was interesting, carriers only gave partials. Like they would do a carrier version of the OS and it was interesting. They pull out features, which was weird. Hmm. All right. We've got the tiny plant <coughs> line pulling itself out over there. Hold the blades. Yeah. You ever been slapped by one of those? Yep. <laughs> All it the time. Hurts so bad and leaves such an incredible red mark every single time. Oh, wait till when it's really cold out, these will just snap in half. Oh, oh God. Well, it is definitely cold here in Portland. We're expecting uh, apparently snow at some point. Oh. Yeah, it feels it, it feels it's, good here again. Oh, it'll, it'll go back to cold. But. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I was kind of I was kind of blown away. <laughs> it got just super cold last night. I'm just buried underneath eight layers of blankets because <laughs> I refuse to close my window at night. I'm like, nope. That's I how like I got here. sick. Oh. At least I think so. Yes. All right. We are almost there. We're getting so much closer now. Yeah, this is really the last thing right here. We got a couple plugging in SATAs and then probably a SATA cable. Yep. And we're good. Okay. And then we're gonna install that beast of a of a graphics card. Let's talk about That's that right. for a hot second. Going into this box is what is currently known as the most powerful graphics card on the market. It's an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090. This comes with 24 gigs of GDDR6X RAM, which is just mind boggling to me. So much memory. <clears throat> but also so much performance when you look at what's required by games you know from games like well like hogwarts legacy my gosh apparently that thing requires just to get it to function <laughs> is a huge graphics card 10 gigs is what i heard 
Jeez, what? And I'm scared because that's what I have. <laughs> Your card's gonna be screaming. Well, I have a 2070 and I'm not, and it's like, yeah, you'll be lucky if you can pull 45 frames. I was yeah. thinking, well, that seems unnecessarily negative. I've been playing a lot of old school RuneScape. So my, Have you already done your Iron Man yet? Yes, yes. I have a Ooh, hardcore yeah. Iron Man now. And I'm running it at a beautiful 1 million frames per second. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it. Uh, I was playing Bloons TD6 and that uh, Tower Defense 6, and it comes in. <coughs> even at 144, I mean, we're, we're, it easily punches three and a, 350 frames per second, which is hilarious. Wow. But once you get so much activity happening on the screen at once, everything just stops <laughs> functioning. Yeah. The stream just comes to a slow stop and it's the evil. That's how you know you've successfully defended. You're like, look at all this. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. All right, let's take a look at this. Uh, this is an MSI variant of this. What are some of the things that stand out and show us some of the features of this card? Paul. Yeah, so just initial reaction to this. This is a huge, heavy card. It's a, so our bracket will show it's a three slot, but you can see the fans stick out quite a bit. So this is a four slot card. Some people might call this three and a half. I'm gonna call it a four slot. Um, big fans here, definitely got RGB lighting right here and right here. Um, and yeah, it's got a silent mode switch, which is pretty cool right here. What? Yeah, so. What does that do? So that's gonna make the fans um, not spin up as fast to keep it quiet. Definitely gonna leave that off. That way this thing can perform better. Don't I was gonna say, will that affect on. performance? Mm -hmm. And will that lower its, its maximum heat threshold? Yeah, it will, it will. Okay. Now, this has a lot of heat pipes coming through. So if I show you this end, you can see each one of these heat pipes. Looks like we've got oh, wow. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that is a lot that I, are running through this whole channel here. I did not know that that's what they were, but that's wild. Yeah, you can see them kind of coiled up right in here, running through oh, and then yeah. all these fins are connected to them. And then the idea is the heat comes out to these fins, which will allow air to come through and dissipate the heat. Um, but yeah, this is a solid card. This is big. It's a big boy. We'll definitely need the uh, the mounting bracket for this. Nice. I think mine is a my twenty seventy is a gigabyte <coughs> or gigabit. Okay, yeah. And it's so. This is gonna sound weird. <clears throat> well, maybe it's a, maybe it's a common question. I know we've kind of talked about it before, but when it comes to the super variants. Mm -hmm. How are those different than TI? So a super is in between, so let's say 2080. You've got 2080, 2080 super and 2080 TI. So the super is in between the base and the TI. A little bit better than the okay. base, but not as good as the TI. Gotcha. Mm. Yeah, that is gonna, that is actually worrisome. Now that you brought that up, Hayden, <laughs> uh, the fact that it does ask, it does want 10 gigs, a That's minimum of 10 I gigs heard. on your graphic, I on have your graphics it. card. I got my 1080 Ti and I'm scared it's not gonna be able to run. I only have eight gigs on mine, so I'm not even sure if it's gonna function, Dang. which is bizarre, but. You're gonna have to play in 480. I'm gonna per pull all that, pull that, play yeah, I'm playing in 10, I'll, I'll be playing 1080 on low settings and we'll see if I can pull mm -hmm. 60 frames per second. <laughs> I'm so used to playing games past 60. One of my Overwatch buddies, oh, yeah. we lost him to the Hogwarts game. Yeah. He's gone. Oh, no. Yeah, the uh, the 60 F, it's interesting. You know, we started playing games at a much lower frame rate than that. The Xbox 360 was lucky if you got 30. But that, then you get it to 60. <coughs> and then once I jumped over to PC and got that increased, uh, th that increased flow, my gosh, everything became better. And now, if I have if I have less than seventy five frames per second, I'm annoyed. Same. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. I'm, I am irritated, and it gives me a headache. I probably shouldn't be. I'm but... so used to the one forty four. I'm yeah. I'm a spoiled child. And ironically, like I will turn down my graphics quality in order to get those better frames because I would rather have better frames than better. Yeah. Same. Graphics quality. I would rather pay especially when play ten eighty p. Yep. Or lower if yeah. I have to. It's... I shouldn't have to, but yeah. Yeah, I think the um, the refresh rate or whatever the frames is way more important than the uh, than the detail. 
All right, so we're taking out our PCIe slots here for this video card. Okay. Got to do three of these because this is such a big card. And once these are out, we'll go ahead and rotate this machine a little bit. That way you can watch the install of the video card. Oh yeah, or we can lay it down. Okay. Probably lay it down with this big yeah. card. Now, because of the weight of the card, are we going to be using a card support? Yes, we are. Yeah, we got it. So we I have that it. bracket mounted right now, the main part. Oh, look at that, it's this already in. <laughs> right here. That's where we broke our screw earlier on in the build. <laughs> um, now, MSI did include this, which I'll show you. I'll take it out of the packaging. As a GPU brace, so. Um, so they included this as a GPU brace. Now, this is obviously better than nothing, but nothing mounts over here. It just mounts to the side. So it's really just a little bit of support. We'd still use some GPU sag. So we are not going to use this. We've got a separate brace that will hold it from the other side that you'll see um, and give it just over, a way better support than this one would do. So here we go. You can back your head up a little bit, Hayden. There you go. I'll just slide that right in there. Oh, one thing to note, this board does not come with a super button. Sadly. Mm. Uh-oh. And that is my worst and fear that's why... right there. Oh. Oh. That's why Listen, you have magnetic screwdrivers. This one sucks. Mine's better. I say it's better, but then it doesn't pick up. It's fine. So when they're those big thumb <laughs> screws, they're kind of hard. They got a little bit extra weight to them. Yeah. It's bad when you drop it in the video card in between I've done like, that. In those gaps. You're like, oh, okay, what? I guess oh, we got to uh, play the rotating game. I guess when you just had to have to shake it out, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, you just kind of <laughs> rotate it slowly and you hear the, it's like Making plinko. you do a backflip. Yeah, you hear this. Yeah, you, you don't want to bend any of those spins mm -hmm. at all. Right. And the, yeah, they are pretty fragile. Yeah, there are some of those on my air conditioner that are uh, our, our HVAC that are dog pod and it's just like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? The one time we've got a maintenance guy here for the AC, the dog comes out there and just pauses. It. <laughs> it's like, you, sir, <laughs> you need to stop. Mm -hmm. All right, so we got all three of our screws in there now. Next up is to do the final stage on the brace. Then we got some power we're gonna plug into there. Yeah, so you can see this has the 12 pin power connector, which we are seeing a lot with the newer cards. Um, and that's more of an adapter from that 12 pin to what our power supply has. So this is gonna have gotcha. three eight pins from our power supply going into that 12 pin that you can see right there. Are there any tips or tricks to getting that to work out correctly, especially when it comes to cable management so that you're not resting the cable, so to speak, on something that's going to be really hot, or are these generally pretty heat resistant? Uh, they are pretty heat resistant. Now, we like to pull our cables under the card, and with this case, it'll go under straight into a hole, so it won't actually wrap um, under the card. Oh, wow. Now, some oh, cases don't okay. have that, so we like to wrap it under the card, but the biggest thing you wanna look out for there is to make sure it's not in contact with those fans. So have enough slack to where it won't make contact with those. And then you won't have to worry about it heating. So there is that. Here's gonna get that cover back on. And what, we were ready for panels, Hayden? Is that right? Yeah. Well, I gotta cut these ties. Oh, you gotta cut all the, the zip ties that you hadn't cut yet. That's right. Mm-hmm. Once he's got those cut, we'll put our panels back on <coughs> back here, and then we'll really show you how this thing looks. So we'll show it before these panels are on, that way you can see it okay. without them. Yeah. Snip, well, snip, we're getting snip. That in there, we're waiting, watching the smile on Hayden's face get bigger and bigger with each of the ones that he cuts. <laughs> Until one of the things goes in your eye. Yeah. That is... That is terrifying to even consider, and now I will have nightmares. Thanks. You're welcome. Uh, Paul, real quick, let's talk about the 
front of the front panel of this case mm -hmm. because it's got a neat little feature on it that I always find amazing. Yes, yeah, so you can see those three gold dots <coughs> there at the top under our USBs. Um, and yeah. what that is, is let me grab our front panel here. So that makes contact with these three gold leads here, and that's gonna power our RGB on this front panel. So this actually is installed like this, and then when this is latched in, those things make contact, and that's how it gets power. A pretty cool design, gotcha. honestly. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and rotate this a little bit, Hayden. So we'll show you the tie-up before we get these doors on. It's a really clean tie-up. Hayden does a great job at these. You can see all the cables managed there. And then go ahead and throw those doors on, Hayden. We'll show you how it looks with those on. And here's what I, one of the things that I absolutely love. Everything, instead of being screw-based or slot-based, these are peg-based. Yeah. So as you can see, they just slide right on there. They swing open, they swing closed. It's gonna prevent well, it's going to basically isolate that cable management area and also help with airflow. Yep, exactly. And see, that's just so clean. And with this power supply, the yeah. CPU cable there is white, but, um, you know, it's hard. It, it blends still looks in. great. Yeah, it looks great. And the cool thing about this, especially with given you've got to get the filters on, is the doors. And this is what I love because both of these doors are immaculately decorated. Absolutely beautiful. But they... They're literally doors. Right. They slide on as pegs, and you can open it, close it. All good. Yeah, I really like these. Like I mentioned before, this is the same case that I have in my personal system at home. I love this. Love this case. Yeah. So, and my favorite part of this design is this top panel here. I love that it has that. So I'll give this yeah, to you, that's Hayden. Gorgeous. We'll get this rotated and see if this thing turns on. There we go. There we go. God, this is gorgeous. It's so pretty. Yeah. This has so many RGBs in really those fans. It really lights up well, so. Yeah. Well, and it'll light up the tree from the back. It's going to look gorgeous. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this, and it's the moment of truth. So once we get this power cable plugged in, before we even turn it on, go, go ahead and we'll flip the switch on the back and we should be able to see that the board has power through some RGBs on there. And I could be wrong, I'm not yeah. too familiar with this board. Is the actual power switch on there, Hayden? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, All right, one so quick on. question, because uh, I didn't bring up before we turn it on. Uh, where does this go once it's, once you've, uh, what, now that it's assembled? Yeah, so this is gonna go into our testing and integration department. Every machine we build here, whether it's for our own testing, for a customer, for a giveaway, all goes through the same process. Once it's built, it goes to testing and integration, and that's where we will stress test the system, load the operating system. Basically what we do is when it gets there, the first thing we do is get into the BIOS. We'll make sure the RAM speed is set correctly. Um, do a few other settings in there that might need changed, might not. Um, then we'll load the operating system, any games the customer wants. And then after that, we put the system through the stress test. We do a 12 hour stress test using various benchmarking software. Um, and as long as it passes that testing, then we send it over to QA and it shuts <coughs> out. Nice, yeah. awesome. Well, let's go ahead and see if this works. All right, moment of truth here. Right? Oh Ooh, my God, it's already on. That was just fast. Look at that. That looks so good. That is incredible. Look at all those colors. Everything synced up. Motherboard is lighting mm -hmm. up. The RAM, I believe, is also lights up. The front colors. Look at that. Yep. Absolutely oh, incredible. What a what a beautiful look at that. Just swings right open. And there you go. We've got a beautiful machine. Let's cover once again what went into this incredible model. This, of course, is a Sakura edition. Sakura Edition Evolve X White. It is a CLX RAW PC. It has an Intel Core i9-13900KF processor that's mounted onto an MSI MPG Z790 Edge Wi-Fi motherboard. It has 32 gigs total of RAM. That's two 16 gig gel sticks of DDR5-5200, and it's going to have its graphics punched through by a <laughs> by a huge NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4090 24 gig graphics card. Uh, the operating system, which will be Windows 11, is going to be held on a one terabyte Samsung 980 M.2 NVMe SSD 
uh, solid state drive and it has a secondary drive for all your files and games and whatever else you could think of and that's a four terabyte three and a half inch seagate barracuda hard disk drive your processor is going to be cooled by an enermax liquid max 3 rgb 360 closed uh, liquid cooler and of course it's going to be powered by a thousand watt fantex amp series 80 plus gold uh power supply unit with seven different game dsa olus m2 rgb fans that are weight white based that is amazing <coughs> g g mm -hmm. all just, right yeah these things just look so good yeah absolutely absolutely agree all right that is going to bring us to the end of today's program don't forget you can follow us on social media to catch up with all the latest and greatest of what we do here on the show and what's the latest and greatest going on with clx that is youtube tiktok and twitter at clx gaming you can find us here tuesdays and thursdays at 11 a.m pacific that's 2 eastern at uh, twitch.tv slash clx gaming tv for our clx foundry live show there's also our Discord if you want to get involved with the community, and you can find a select codes there as well that'll get you an extra 100 entries into the giveaway for the Powder Pink. That is discord.gg slash CLX Gaming. And all of this happens with these amazing people. So thank you so much for watching. And on behalf of Jason, Paul, and Hayden, I'm DJ Blue PDX. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Thanks, everyone. Bye, guys.